One of my viewers, John Lorscheider, gave a, um, a great comment about Factor V, do-it-yourself diagnosis, uh, Factor V leading. <clears throat> it was such a good comment, I, had, uh, I decided I'd had to just do a video on it. I had heard that you could do this through um, 23andMe. But I never really took the time to, uh, to investigate it. So, <clears throat> yes, you can using 23andMe and um, that, um, John also gave us, Mr. Lorscheider also gave us a good reference to 23andMe and to Snippedia. This is the um, Factor V leading SNP. A SNP, S-N-P, stands for single nucleotide polymorphism. It's a variation in a specific uh, nucleotide in the DNA. It's what we mean when we're looking at genetic um, variations. G each genetic disease has a SNP. Some of them have multiple SNPs or multiple locations or variations where you can get a problem. For example, 9P21 is getting up to about two dozen different SNPs now each one of which creates a little bit of uh, variation. But this is not about SNPs and genetic diseases. It's about do-it-yourself, factor V, leading diagnosis. Uh, I'm Ford Brewer, um, <clears throat> PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, uh, disability prevention. And I'm presenting something uh, that was submitted by John Lorscheider. Thank you again, Mr. Lorscheider. So basically, it's a simple process. You go to 23andMe and get a genetic profile. <clears throat> Number two, and if you look at if you look at the comments on the uh, on the Factor V leading uh, area, you find Mr. Lorschotter's comments. He even gave us the links to get to where we need the Snippedia link for. Factor V leading and the 23andMe link. <clears throat> so you get your profile, you look up SNP uh, regarding six, or RE6025. There are other numbers if you look around. For example, in Wikipedia, they give you a different number, but you can put these numbers together. The bottom line is for SNPedia or for uh, uh, 23andMe, use this number. Um, <clears throat> the higher risk the factor uh, five leading variant allele is A. Uh, the wild type or the no increase in risk variant is G. There are two alleles. If you have two alleles, in other words, both high risk alleles, you've got up to 11, uh, 11 or 12 times higher risk of thrombosis. If you have one allele, in other words, an A and a G. An A came from your mom and a G came from your dad or vice versa. That's what we're talking about here in terms of genetics, simple genetic processes. If you're, this is called heterozygous. This is called homozygous. If you're heterozygous, you have three to five times the risk. If you have two Gs, in other words, you're homozygous for the wild type, you have no increase in risk. Again, thank you, uh, thank you again, Mr. Lorscheider. This is a, a, a great do-it-yourself, Factor V leading. Now, real quick, <clears throat> what if you're sitting there thinking uh, you haven't seen the video on Factor V leading or you don't remember? So Factor V leading is a uh, increase in clotting. It's the most common genetic increase in clotting seen in Europeans. Caucasians in the U.S., North America, have about a, a 1 in 20 probability of having factor V leading. The leading, by the way, comes from the town where it was first discovered, Leiden in Europe. Um, <clears throat> I think it's the, in the Netherlands. I could be wrong on that, though. Um, <clears throat> factor V has to do with the clotting mechanism. There is a pro-protein which attaches to uh, factor five within the prodding, within the uh, clotting cascade 
it decreases factor V's clotting uh, propensity. In factor V leading, there is a problem with that cofactor. So it doesn't decrease factor V's propensity to clot. Now, <clears throat> how is it diagnosed? Usually it's diagnosed by finding someone who's, un who's a Caucasian under 40 years old and they've had a venous clot, like a, a pulmonary um, embolus, a clot to the lungs, another type of, uh, again, this tends to cause a venous clot, not so much arterial. Um, <clears throat> When that happens, if you've got a sharp doc, many of us do, many of us, our docs are not thinking about that. Um, they'll look for, they'll do, uh, decl they'll do clotting studies and then look for this with, with genetic studies. What do you do for it? Well, you, you have awareness and special considerations for high risk periods such as pregnancy, contraception, surgery, and with cardiovascular disease. So the bottom line is, <clears throat> If you're going to have surgery, this patient's saying, look, I'm aware, so I'm, say, I'm going to survive it and not have a problem. But if you think about it, what if you had surgery and your, and your doc didn't know and you could throw a major clot? There are clotting, uh, increased clotting uh, episodes during pregnancy. Obviously, with oral contraceptives, if you're thinking about Going on the pill, it'd be nice to know. It'd be helpful to know. Uh, just a, a couple of images regarding um, factor V. Clotting happens this way. You get this mechanism, uh, which I'll show in just a second for the biochemistry geeks, um, which forms a network of proteins. Those proteins capture everything that's in the blood, all the blood cells, and it, that's how a clot works. That clot is formed by this. It's a series of, a very complicated series of, um, of proteins, each of which can amplify the next or can de-amplify. And that's the issue. Uh, medical students always have a hard time learning the clotting um, uh, cascade. But the clotting cascade is complicated because you have to have a good way for the body to greatly increase the formation of clot or decrease the formation of clot depending on what the need is. And now as you see here, uh, there are factors in here. Um, then there are cofactors which uh, amplify or decrease the, the uh, protein's clotting mechanism or clotting propensity. That's what this is all about. Factor V is one of them. If you don't have, uh, if you have factor V leading, you don't slow down your clotting. You don't have that little break on there, so you tend to clot more. Um, so I talked about how they're usually discovered. Again, one in twenty of us, uh, North American Caucasians have this, unless you happen to find someone who's got a, a clot in the vein in the vein in their leg, or in their. Uh, uh, lungs, the, for those people coming in, one in three of them will have factor five leading. So thank you again, Mr. Lorscheider. Wonderful uh, suggestion. Do it yourself, factor five leading diagnosis.